Um, when I heard about the activists and lawyers that had been illegally arrested and now under house arrest, I, you know, I, I don't think that's right at all. This protest is not just about the arrest of Sudha Bharatwaj, Arun Ferreira, Vernon, Varavar Rao, etc. Nor is it just about Shoma and uh, uh, Rona and all of them. This protest is about the fact that we are going to fight for what our vision of this country is. And we had come to fight for human rights here. Here in India, we have our constitution that uh, guarantees uh, freedom of speech under Article 19.1a and freedom to form associations and unions under Article 19.1b. But both these freedoms have certain reasonable restrictions provided by the constitution itself, like for example, public morality, decency, public order, not fomenting religious sentiments, communalism, etc., etc. So it is under one such reasonable restriction that you have the uh, prevention of unlawful assembly act that has been uh, legislated. I think it's really important that every citizen comes out together in protest and uh, people are unified in terms of their basic constitutional rights, be it freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of assembly. And uh, that's why these protests are very, very important. So now what the government is actually saying to us is that social control will be exercised by all the right-wing organizations. And we as a state are going to facilitate each and every one of that. And any of you all raise your voice against it. All of you all will end up in jail or we will kill you all. But currently, whether that act is being used or misused is the moot point. Because what the act says is the government has the right to curtail unlawful associations. Now, when you're talking about unlawful, the word unlawful is not defined anywhere in the act. So ultimately, it is quite a subjective word, largely left to the discretion of the enforcing authorities as to what they consider is unlawful. The key issue here is that if you dissent, you are immediately turned into a Maoist as if you are violence prone because the right to express is guaranteed in the constitution. Of course, that doesn't mean you can turn violent and therefore they are using it to smear anybody and everybody who has a different point of view as being anti-national. Freedom to dissent meaning, um, you know, I'm from the U.S. And to me, you know, you should be have you should have the right to oppose your government, have the right to oppose higher, uh, you know, the higher powers and societies. And you know, I've learned quickly here that you, uh, that India kind of has restrictions on the press. And I think that everybody should have the right to state their opinion. No, it is an opinion. This is preparation for elections. The last year of lynchings was phase one. Now the second phase is anyone who raises your voice against you will be thrown in. And the third phase of it, which will happen few months before it, are going to be complete large-scale riots all across this country. So I think all of us now, we better pull our socks up. If we are really worried about where our country is headed, now is the time for us to be in. And I think that's the spirit here. Of course, now there is a lot of hue and cry about how this particular act itself should be scrapped because a lot of people feel that this is a rehash of TADA terrorist and uh, disruptive uh, activities act that used to exist to deal with terrorism because there are instances where unlawful activities are also construed as terrorist activities and people are accused of fomenting terrorism and arrested so there is a general set consensus that uh, this particular law is being misused uh, we are mobilizing a movement here in bangalore as uh, the collective called the students outpost to bring out an, uh, a lot of students from different private uni uh, institutions in uh, Bangalore and protest uh, and dissent for the things that matter to us. So it's necessary that people step out and stand against the might of the state and tell the state that we cannot take it anymore and we will not take it anymore and that this will be defeated. To say that we should do away with the act because it's a curtailing of the fundamental freedom of speech, I think is, is too drastic a stand to adopt. Maybe a good idea to talk in terms of certain riders that can be introduced into the act to ensure that there is no misuse of the act. And at any given point of time, I think it's always a good idea to understand the issue from the enforcement point of view also, 
rather than think only from the fundamental freedoms of the citizens um, when it comes to these kinds of activities. Yeah, yeah.